Welcome back to the show, From the Soapbox to the Stage. I'm your host, Bill Corbin. If you're just tuning in, I created the show to interview top speakers and get them to share tips for helping aspiring speakers, as well as those who've already stepped onto a stage, how to move from public speaker to professional speaker. Now, some say that if you want to become a professional speaker, you've got to reach out and seek help from those who have already taken that road before you. That means tapping into the knowledge and experience of speaking coaches and mentors. So to learn more, today I'm interviewing National Speakers Association Hall of Fame speaker, Alan Paris. He was named one of the top 21 speakers for the 21st century by Successful Meetings Magazine and has been quoted in numerous business publications including The Wall Street Journal, Business Week, and Barron's. Mr. Paris's successful journey is an interesting one, rising up from garbage collector to Wall Street executive. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Paris. Thank you, Bill. So we talked in the first segment about your, the journey you took and what you're doing today. One of the things that you mentioned that I want to talk a little bit more about is the speaker intensive program that you're doing. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, speaking intensive started many years ago, and it was actually a hobby where a few times a year I'd get some people together who wanted to be better speakers and wanted to be authentic when they got up there. And now it's blossomed into something that I'm doing about half time. It's about half my business now. Speaking intensive is designed, it's two intense days, hence the name, of full immersion. And it's about bringing out the authentic presenter in people. So many times you'll meet a speaker before they get up and they're an engaging, intelligent, interesting person. And then they get up to speak and you're sitting there saying, why didn't the person from lunch give the speech? <laughs> they turn into, it took me years to figure out what many people turn into. They turn into, I think, a mediocre imitation of what they think a speaker's supposed to be. Well, you know, a great actor can pull it off, but most of us aren't great actors. And it's about bringing all of who you are up there, your authentic self, the variety of who you are, edited, of course, organized better, yes, but you. Don't leave yourself away from the stage. Bring you to the stage. Now that's interesting. I also want to make mention here, uh, in the opening, I was uh, letting my viewers know that we're now, this show is now being aired in Aurora, Colorado, and you hail from Colorado, the, the Denver, Boulder area, correct? Yes, Denver, Boulder, Aurora is not that far away, so uh, welcome to my friends in, yes, in Colorado. So for, for Aurora, we're, we're, I'm interviewing a local in That's your right. area. A, lo local. a lot of speakers live in Denver because it's a good place to live when you're traveling all over the country. Ah, Denver's kind of a good in the hub middle. to Good no hub matter. to move around, kind of in the middle of the country. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so, uh, you're, so you let people enroll. How many do you enroll at a time? How many do you take to put this, this program at a time? Eight to ten people. So it's Eight a small group, two intense days. We have some aftercare coaching, and that's what we do. And uh, we'll be showing your, your website at the bottom of the screen so people can go there to get more information about that Thank if you. they're interested in the program. So let's, let's talk to the aspiring speakers in our audience watching the show. And let's start with uh, the first tip that you offer, which is to make use of speaker coaches or mentors. Yeah. Or you know, and mentors. Great golfers have coaches. Great athletes have coaches. Great actors have directors and coaches. And people have an idea that with speaking you don't need coaching. When I first became a professional speaker, as I mentioned earlier, I'd done a lot of speaking. I thought I was good enough. But you know what? It's not, it's not the same. It's like going from college football player to professional football player. It's a different league. And you've got to have a lot more sc scope, a lot more variety. It isn't always speaking to the same kind of audience. You had to get a lot better. And I had some friends encourage you, you need a coach. I don't need a coach. You need a coach. And then I got a coach. And then I got another coach. And then I got another coach. Got a comedy coach. I'm not a comedian, but I use humor in my presentations. And that coaching transformed me. And I still use coaches. Even though I coach, I use a coach. Can you uh, define for the viewers the difference between hiring a coach and using a mentor? Well, a mentor is somebody, <coughs> it can be the same person. You can have a coach whose job it is to mentor you. There's a lot of business coaches, and that is, in fact, what many of them do. So it could be the same person. But for me personally, mentors have been either bosses in my life or other speakers that I know who are a little further along in their career who just encourage you along the way. Whereas a coach is watching your video, in the room watching you speak, really taking apart what you do. 
So it, the good tip here is to spend that money. Spend the money to find a coach, get references, right? To, to Absolutely people, get references. People who, uh, who've done a good job for other speakers and uh, take the time to learn from a coach, an intensive coach. And I agree with you, mentors are awesome. So I, in, in the various roles that I play, I want to be a great boss. I have to have a mentor that would help me in being a supervisor boss. I need to be a speaker. I need to be a marketing person. Find people who are already doing what you want to do and doing it well. And I say mentoring, you can do that without having to pay, really, because take them for lunch, you know, take them to lunch, buy them a coffee, and get them to help you. Because you were actually my first official mentor. When, when I saw you perform on stage at the company where I was uh, working at the time in my early career in IT, and after your presentation, what you did with um, the two things, you stood up on a box behind the lectern, which really brought the, the uh, audience into your hands. The other was, you used a newspaper. You pulled out a local newspaper and, and quoted something from the paper, even though we knew you were from out of town, and I remembered, that's awesome. And so when I went up to the stage after your presentation, I asked you for one tip. Just give me one tip, uh, Mr. Priest, before you leave. What do you, if I want to be a speaker, what do you suggest I do? And you did. You named, use something to show that you care about your audience, that you, that you do know what's going on, and, and to really connect with your audience. Yeah, that's really, you know, if you think about it, and this, if you think about it, most presenters that you hear, if you were to sum up their fundamental attitude, it's here I am. Here's my talk and my ideas and my, my goals, my objectives, my presentation, my slides. Think of how much better it would be if there was just a hint of there you are. That you showed that you cared about them, that you knew about them, that you knew their activities. And most people don't even have a hint of that. If you just get a hint of that, you're going to stand out. And if you can move it along the continuum to have more and more of there you are. That's a huge distinction, and that delivers value. I think it's really powerful when you really help the audience make them feel it's about them and not you as a speaker. Um, have you ever had an epic fail when it comes to speaking? Uh, let me get out the list. <laughs> I know, it, it, seriously, I've had a few, and the, the main one was when I first started, I was in a volunteer organization, I went through their training program, where very few people made it through and finally got to lead these three-hour evening seminars with a break in the middle, 250 people. No microphone in the, back, back then. We, we, we had a wired mic, but we had a little bit of a mic. 250, no, no wireless mic. Um, 250 people, and we take a break. The standard for people lost at a break was zero. The all-time record was six. I lost 48. And Bill, I can still hear the chairs stacking. <laughs> the, clank, the, the staff was trained to take the chairs out of a few people that didn't come back. 48 chairs stacked, ka clank, ka clank, ka clank, one after another. And I have to go another hour and 20 minutes in front of the 202 people that came back. And I was humiliated, I was embarrassed, I was lost. Didn't sleep that night, as you might guess. And when I finally dozed off in the morning, I woke up and it hit me. I had a choice to make. I would either never, ever get in front of an audience again, or I'd get good at it. I'd learn the craft. And that, for me, was the turning point. That epic fail is really what allowed me to become a speaker. And I can still hear the chairs. And that's excellent. We, when we learn from the things that happen to us, we get better. And that's why problems are opportunities to learn and to, and to improve. I have to tell you, mine, uh, my fail was uh, in traveling. You know, I was great as a local speaker, but then I started to branch out and I was going across the country. And I was uh, staying in Nashville and I got a speaking gig in Chattanooga. And driving down the highway, headed to Chattanooga from Nashville, I go, I got plenty of time, you know, to be there <laughs> until all of a sudden I passed the sign that said, now entering Eastern Time Zone. Ah. And then I thought, Eastern Time Zone? And then the, 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 the panic. I now had just lost, you know, an hour. An, an hour <laughs> and began driving like crazy. I, I got I'm there. starting to sweat as you do this. <laughs> I want you to know, because those um, are the kind of things we, we dread. Yeah, it, it, it's, I never thought about time zones before, having been outside the Eastern time zone. I showed up, it was about uh, 20, 30 minutes after I was supposed to have started. The place is empty, and they were expecting uh, probably 120 people. These are practitioners. And the food, the women were closing up all. They had a 
huge buffet, closing it all up, and they were not happy with me. I'll remember that forever. You know, when you get sometimes on a plane or at a party, somebody will ask me what I do. And if I'm in a mood, I'll say, I show up <laughs> on time in the right place. And a big part of being a professional speaker who travels is showing up. And look, can I give one piece of advice sure, on that, sure. that that I got when I first started yeah. by an experienced professional speaker? He said that I asked him, we, were, we had spoken together in a meeting, and I said, and we had to go to another speech, and I said, do you want to eat here in, the, in this nice hotel, or you want to eat at the, at the airport? And he said, let me give you the first rule of travel for somebody who's got to get there. Go as far as you can, as soon as you can. You eat at the airport. <laughs> do you eat on this side of security, the other side of security? <laughs> on the other side of security. When do you board the plane? Go as far as you can, as soon as you can. And boy, that saved me a few times. Yeah, I can see how that works. It's so important to, to leave those things when you can relax. So I work very hard at getting to where I need to be. Then I can relax and think about food and what other things and I you need to And you check time zones. <laughs> you check time zones. <laughs> Listen, thank you so much for coming out. It was a great show. I appreciate your, your um, inspiration and your knowledge and wisdom. And I, I know a lot of viewers will learn from what you had to, to share today. So. Oh, thank you for having me. On today's show, we met National Speakers Association Hall of Fame speaker Alan Paris. His primary tip for us was know that you can't do it yourself and hire speaking coaches and find mentors. Now, he gave us a whole lot of other tips, but that's when you want to remember. It takes a lot of courage to get up in front of others and speak. It takes even more courage to do it as part of your business or your marketing plan. And when you do, it will set you apart from your competition and get you noticed by your prospects and your customers. So, make the choice to be different from the rest. I hope you'll join me for future episodes of the show as I set out to tap in to the knowledge and wisdom of professional speakers who are willing to share their secrets for success on the stage. As Dale Carnegie once said, making the most of today, get interested in something, shake yourself awake, and let the winds of enthusiasm sweep through you with gusto. I'm Bill Corbett. I'll see you the next time on From the Soapbox to the Stage.